In this video, we're going to talk about filter options. I'm going to need an example. So I'm going to bring out doors here. And here I'm going to look at type mark. I'm going to edit this check. So we know the properties here. It's name type mark. The description here, it looks for types with empty type mark values. I need it to fail when it's matching elements and the failure message. This check result pretty much tells me what this logic needs to dictate. So I need it to fail when this logic matches any elements that I define. So first I'm going to set up the criteria, OST doors included. This function here, this function equals one. This value here is actually telling the checker here if it's exterior or interior doors. So function one means it's an exterior door. Here for the operator, I needed to use and. This is pretty much saying to include this criteria or this line item here, this filter. So next, what we need to do is define what we're looking for. Parameter type mark has value equals false. So this here, what I'm saying here is that if it has no value here, okay, I want it to fail. This is the key line item here. Now you could certainly say has no value equals true, but that will actually give you a false report. In this instance, what you want to do is you want to look for has value equals false. You want to make sure that what you're looking for has no value. If I was to change this to true, then it's looking for any value in type mark. And that's going to give me a bad result because I want it to actually check to see if it's empty. Next. This needs to be defined in order for Revit to distinguish between its types or instances of this particular item. So I'm going to say and include type or instance is element type equals true. So let's look at a little bit more advanced check here. I'm going to come over here to check sets. I'm going to look at furniture systems here. And you know what? I'm going to look at no manufacturer. I'm going to edit this check. In this check, this is just looking for manufacturer. I'm going to edit this check so that I can look for model number as well. Here, I'm going to say no model or make. I'm going to still say fail when matching elements are found. Checks for type with empty manufacturer or model values. And here I'm going to say type has an empty manufacturer or model value. So here, this or here is actually very important here. What I'm going to do is add in another filter. I'm going to use the same kind of logic here, but instead of and, I'm going to use or. That way, it can actually define or distinguish between manufacturer and model number. So I'm going to use category. I'm going to build this out again. Whoops. Furniture systems included true. Add in a filter and parameter model has value. Of course, I'm going to make this false. And I'm going to define what kind of parameter it is, either a type or instance. Add in filter, 
type or instance is element type equals true. So this is saying look for manufacturer, either it has a value, and that value is going to be a type parameter, and if it's false, report, or look for furniture systems, parameter model, has value also equals false, and that parameter is a type parameter. Now I can save this. So some things that you have for operators, you have and, which can further define what you're looking for in terms of your filter, or which can be another set of filters, or you can exclude. So if I want to, I can exclude a certain kind of furniture that does not have a model or manufacturer if I know the type or some kind of differentiator between it and the other furniture pieces. In category, or criteria rather, you have category, you have API parameter, API type, you can also look for specific families, host, host parameter, level, even parameters again, phase created, phase demolished, phase status, redundant, room, space, structural type, type or instance, so on and so forth. Your property here is going to be defined by whatever criteria you have. So I'm gonna say a new check here. I'm gonna add in a filter. So here I can say, I wanna look for work set. With work set, the only thing I can define is the name I could say either does not contain, matches regex, or doesn't match regex, either equals or does not equal. I can also say things like phase status or phase demolished or phase created, things like that. If I was to use parameter, for this guy I'm going to actually say category. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the criteria, make it so that's category, and then come over here to property and take a look for OST doors. So I'm going to select OST doors and say include code equals true. I'm going to add in a filter after that. And this is my goal is to look for a parameter. Okay that is blank. So what I want it to do is that I need to actually have it fail when it finds matching elements. So for the property here, I'm gonna come over here, click on this down arrow, and after a brief moment, what it does is that it shows me all of the Revit parameters that I can define in my project. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna look for door number, There we go. Here, I'm gonna say condition has value equals false. So when this check is run, it will look for door number has value equals false. And when it matches the elements, my result is going to give me a fail.